So decent sci-fi games are few and far between in my opinion, and decent VR sci-fi games are even rarer. But after seeing Hubris announced for the PSVR 2, we couldn't help but get a little bit excited for this one. And so in today's review, we're going to be giving you the rundown on Hubris, what to expect from the game, and what my thoughts and opinions on it are after playing it. As always though, drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more PlayStation content, and let's get into it. So story-wise then, we play as a recruit in training set to become an agent of something called the Order of Objectivity. And after arriving at a twin planet system, we then receive a message from one of our leaders, this rather miserable looking baldy fella, telling us to head down immediately to the planet's surface and locate an agent whom they've lost contact with there. During our descent to the planet's surface though, we're then shot down and after emerging from the water and battling some of the local aquatic fauna, we discover that we're not the only ones with an active interest in the planet, with an opposing faction already taking ground there. And so it's down to us to locate the missing agent, discover what our mission was and why these purple clad machine folk are causing such a ruckus. Now I've been a little obscure with the storyline on this one, partially to avoid spoilers, but partially because, to be quite honest, when it comes down to it, there's not an awful lot to it. Around 60% of the way through the game, I'd had about 5 minutes worth of dialogue, which explained very little, and by that point I'd kind of felt like I was no longer invested in it. But there's no real world building going on, no inventive plot twists to really keep you engaged, and its conclusion left me wanting. And I can't help but feel that if the devs put more time into the storyline and less into the combat and platforming, then Hubris would have been a much better game for it. Now, getting into the gameplay, we're introduced to Hubris with a bit of a tutorial in the form of a series of training missions, and here we're given a basic rundown of the game's controls. We're taught how to run, how to jump, how to climb ledges, gripping them with each hand by pushing in the L and R buttons before pulling ourselves up, how to swim through the water by sweeping our arms in a breaststroke motion to move forwards with downwards, upwards and backwards sweeps moving us in the relevant directions, and we're also taught how to use our weapon and backpack, with us drawing our weapon with a push of the circle button before aiming and firing with the trigger, and reaching over our shoulder to place and take items out of our backpack, which are also grabbed with the push of the L and R buttons. That though is about it for the controls, generally it's pretty simple stuff and easy to get to grips with. Now from here we progress to the planet's surface, and the game itself is a mostly linear affair with a few small side areas to explore, but you'll generally be working your way from point A to point B, climbing, platforming, swimming and fighting, with the odd bit of puzzle solving thrown in for good measure. Most of your direction in the game is given by the ship's pilot, who follows you around as this spherical droid and occasionally helps you out with things, but the guidance is sometimes pretty vague, and I occasionally found myself at a loss as to where to go, despite the game's linearity. Now, the pacing of the game is relatively quick, with us jumping from one area to the next, with us immediately arriving at our destination and given an objective to complete, which generally turns out to be just around the next corner, so there's actually very little freedom given to explore the world, which to be honest I felt was a real shame, and much like the shallow plotline, there was ample opportunity to enrich this world's lore through its environments. As it is though, the majority of the gameplay is spent either platforming or engaging in combat, and while both of these are relatively decent in terms of the mechanics and they work well for the most part, sadly they're also a little lacklustre, becoming somewhat repetitive and suffering from some rather frustrating bugs. The climbing for instance, often requires you to jump and grab ledges using the R and L buttons, but the problem here is, like I already mentioned, these two buttons are also used to remove items from your backpack, and many a time I found myself accidentally pulling shit out of my backpack and missing ledge grabs, ultimately falling to my doom. And the game's checkpoint system is rather stingy, setting you back a fair ways and having you repeat the same section over. 
When it comes down to the combat, things have been kept pretty simple here, which is fantastic for accessibility. No complicated reloading mechanics, just tap the bottom of your pistol to reload the next clip and put your hands together to hold the weapon with both hands and bring up a laser pointer, which makes aiming much easier. The flip side to this though is that this simplicity dumbs down combat too much in my opinion. And the enemies mainly consist of tick-like creatures, underwater squids and a few different foot soldiers and drones, none of which have great AI. And so, rather than requiring any real strategy, the combat ends up feeling more like a gallery shooter against moving targets. And while a little more engaging, the underwater combat is particularly frustrating due to the swimming mechanics and you being armed with a gun which requires a second or two to charge between shots. Now, the final thing to talk about is the game's crafting mechanics, which again are pretty simple. Throughout your travels, you'll find materials which can then be used at 3D printing stations, though you must first process these materials by tediously dropping them one by one into a crusher before popping the refined materials into the machine to upgrade your weapons. The game has a total of three different weapons, those being the pistol, shotgun and machine gun, though I actually ended up spending over 60% of the game playing with nothing but the pistol, before I discovered that you don't actually find these weapons out in the world and you actually have to transform your pistol into them, something which I either missed or the game just completely neglects to tell you. It's also worth noting that in addition to these upgrades, you can craft foods and potions to top up your health, Though standing there chewing down on a mango amidst a gunfight feels really out of place in my opinion when a standard issue medkit would have done the trick nicely. So like the thumbnail to this video says, to me Hubris kind of feels like a game which is more style over substance. There are some decent ideas going on and it plays well enough, but it's somewhat lacking in almost every area. The story is shallow and the moment to moment gameplay is engaging for about the first hour or so, but it quickly loses its appeal. And while there is the occasional set piece, such as a medical procedure or a driving segment, whilst being a little more creative, these are merely fleeting breaks from the norm. And the entire thing is also over in about 5 hours, so not an awful lot of playtime with this one either. Overall, Hubris is a somewhat disappointing sci-fi title in my opinion, which shines when it comes to the visuals, but to be quite frank, is a little dull in most other regards. So comfort wise then, Hubris is definitely towards the more extreme end of the spectrum in my opinion, and while the game does have a few accessibility options such as seated mode, snap turning and vignetting, it's really designed to be played standing as there's a lot of arm motions involved with all the climbing, swimming and throwing of objects. For me though, the majority of the motion sickness came from the jumping as there's an awful lot of it in the game and falling in VR is perhaps the single most uncomfortable feeling followed by running at speed, of which again, the game has plenty. So all in all, not the most intense VR experience on the market, but one which those with a weak stomach may be better off avoiding. So I've already mentioned that Hubris is a pretty good looking game, but that being said, there really isn't a huge amount of variety to its environments, with a good portion of your time being spent within industrial looking corridors, while the majority of the outdoor sections are rocky looking landscapes, with the most impressive sections for me being the underwater ones with the neon plant life. And again when it comes to the enemies, decent looking but lacking variety. Audio wise, the game's voice acting is a bit of a mixed bag, most of it is pretty decent, but occasionally it just sounds like it's script read rather than having any real emotion to it. But the game's sound effects and music are all pretty good, with some punchy sounding weaponry and some nice sci-fi beats to play along to. So the final verdict with this one then, and while I initially had high hopes for the game and enjoyed my first couple of hours with it, my interest steadily dropped off the longer I played due to the repetitive combat and some of the more frustrating platforming segments, 
but it was the game's storyline which really left me feeling disappointed, as I'm a huge fan of sci-fi and would have loved to have had some rich new sci-fi lore to immerse myself into, but I was sadly delivered a wafer-thin narrative which was absent throughout the majority of my playthrough. Now I hate being overly critical about games, and Hubris is by no means the worst sci-fi game I've ever played, it's honestly just lacking and pretty mediocre in every way. And so today on the channel, it's getting a middle of the ground 5 out of 10 from me. And I'd say if you're in the market for a new sci-fi shooter, Hubris is well worth considering, though I'd personally wait out on a sale on this one. With that said though, have you played the Steam version of Hubris? Are you looking at picking it up for the PSVR 2? And if you're watching this review after playing it, how did you find it? As always, let me know down in the comments section below. For now though, drop a like if this one helped you out, subscribe to the channel for more PlayStation 5 and PSVR 2 content, as well as weekly deals and top game lists, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks everyone, take care.